Hey guys, welcome back. This is Manny with Tropical Glitz and today we're talking about our additives, our accelerator, our retarder, our inner coat activator, our base coat activator, and our blending solvent. Stay tuned to this episode and we're really gonna get into the nitty gritty of all the info you need to know when to use our products. Made in day, baby. Ooh right now we're going to talk about our inner coat activator and one of the biggest misconceptions people think they need this to mix into their inner coat to spray no our inner coat is a one-to-one -one. we have another video that we just talk about inner coat and when you introduce this but i'm going to give you a little bit more of a breakdown of what's the real purpose for this so our inner coat is one-to-one -one, one part inner coat to one part reducer now this is what you start adding when you're doing multiple layers of artwork you want to protect your artwork you also want to have a little bit more chip resistant and you want to avoid any bleed resistant now this is designed to have a faster speed time so when you're doing your artwork it has a quicker dry time to have it set up and you don't have to worry about anything from your previous paint jobs or artwork coming back up great places to use this is your candy patterns when you're going to tape over your patterns if you're doing anything that has to do with candy and you're doing multiple layers and you're worried about your candy to bleed when you start shooting your your clear coat and it starts to bleed from the lines and your pearls this gives you great control when it comes to spraying your pearls and your metal flakes it's pretty hard to mess up with this now if you obviously add too much of this into your product that's when it's going to gel up you only need 10 percent by volume of whatever you're mixing so if you're mixing four ounces eight ounces you want to make the math it's 10 percent by volume You'll be surprised, two little capfuls of this into a quart of ready to spray inner coat. That's pretty much all you need. You don't really need anything else. It's just a hair of it, just to really change the characteristics of your inner coat. If you use too much of the inner coat activator, it's exactly what is gonna happen. It's gonna activate your inner coat and it's gonna start gumming up and create an issue in your spray gun. Another thing that happens if you use too much of this in your inner coat, and let's say you never get to the point where it gums up, but now you create an issue that you actually make the paint too brittle. It might split open or crack because it's so stiff. And that's the pros and cons with the inner coat activator. Now the base coat activator, extremely similar. These things are almost cousins. The difference is the slow time. This gives you a lot more slowdown. Now this is when you add this into your base coats, into our seductive colors, into anything it gives you a lot more slow time so you can actually spray the car and not have any issues of it drying up on you so when i say these things are like cousins both of these products right here the base coat activator and the inner coat activator extremely similar same chemical makeup the biggest thing is that this one has a little bit more of a flex agent to it and a slower dry time where this one also has a flex agent but what we have in this one is maybe five to ten percent tops and that's great when you have bumpers or curved parts of the car or interior pieces this is what you want to use now we're going to be moving on to accelerator and that's exactly what it is we have the accelerator and retarder if you're in a cold climate and you know for a fact you're, you need to paint and you need to have something dry in a particular time this is when you use the accelerator you want it to speed up your paint this works perfectly for any of our primers our base coats our inner coat our whole line this is designed to work with all our paint line now retarder is the opposite it's actually designed to slow down your product so great example when i'm spraying primer here it's pretty warm here in miami florida on an average day we're at 98 degrees with a high humidity so if i'm mixing primer and i need to get my primer out and have it spray well nice and smooth i'm going to introduce retarder into it because it is so warm here that I need to get that primer to lay out thick and smooth, not to have any dry patterns. And that's when the retarder comes into play. If you put too much of this in your product, in our primer, in our base coat, in our clear, it's gonna dry up. And it's also gonna create an issue where it becomes brittle on the paint job. Or the biggest issue, it dies back. It means that you put so much on it, you spray the project, it looks fantastic. You come back an hour later and it completely looks dull. Or you come back the next day and the paint job looks dull. You added too much of it, put too much of it, and it didn't give enough time for all the gases of the paint to escape for the finish to properly cure. So that's what happens. Now, if you put too much retarder in your primer and your clear, you slowed it down so much, it's never gonna cure, it's gonna stay gummy. And let me tell you, that is one of the worst things you can ever have because you can't even sand that stuff off. You're better off getting a spatula and scraping the, the project because it's just gonna be like gum. And it's a terrible experience. Now the last one, this one's a little bit more tricky. This is something that uh, 
you can use it for the OEM, but I'm gonna give you a couple ideas and tips of how we use it in the custom field. So here is our blending solvent. So this is a really hot solvent. We have it slowed down so it gives you time to melt your edges. Now this could be used for all your OEM work, it can be used for blending panels, it can be used pretty much for anything you need when it comes to blending paint, but this is the trick. We use it for something a little different. Now, when it comes to custom, I'm gonna give you a good example. Um, if I'm spraying a roof on a car and I'm flaking out the whole roof, I'm not gonna clear it right away. I'm gonna let it gas out, make sure all the solvents come out. And then the metal flake plays a big factor. That actually slows down the process of gassing out. So a car gets flaked out. I might actually leave it in, the, in my home studio uh, three, four, five days before I clear it, but very important. I never take it outside. It never gets any UV exposure. Now, when that car is dried out and I can smell it and I don't smell all that solvent, not running the risk of trapping anything with a clear coat, I'm already past my window. So what do I do? This is when this comes into play. I spray this to reactivate it. Now you have to be very careful because you say, well, why don't you sand it? Well, you can't sand the candy. You can't sand metal flake. You're gonna end up burning the job. You're gonna end up ruining the work. So what do you do? If you can't create a mechanical adhesion, you have to create a chemical adhesion. And this is where the blending solvent comes into play. Now you have to be careful with this. This is not for the faint of heart. And you have to have a very good skill level and a grasp of what you're doing because it's very easy to, to make a mistake and ruin your paint job. I'll spray one or two coats, not very heavy, nice medium to light. And when I say light, I really do mean light. This is gonna actually reactivate the base coat, make everything regenerate itself, remelt itself. And then from there, I can let that gas out and I can start stacking my clear coat and I don't have to worry about it. I can actually have that adhesion. Now, one thing is very important, do not spray too much of this. It will soften up your paint and it will go all the way down and soften up your primer. And it's gonna pretty much, you'll be surprised, it'll put a run in your panel. Your paint will run off that panel. So you have to be cautious of how you spray this. And another thing, that this does not mix with anything. This is exactly how it is. Right out of the can is what you put in your gun and you spray on your panel. Very important, remember, all our products have technical data sheets. They're TDS, they're available on our website for downloading. Now all you have to do is put the TDS in your shopping cart and check out. It's free of charge and you get to print them. The TDS is the most important thing you need to know how to properly mix our products with our products and get amazing results. So that kind of gives you an idea of what we have here for our different activators. And if you love what you see, do me a favor, like, subscribe, and follow. We're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on YouTube. We are everywhere. And don't forget, we're also on Facebook. And check out our website, www dot tropicalglitz.net so guys do me a favor if you love the content make a comment down below if you want to see us do another video of something else or touch subject on another product of ours let us know we are delighted to see your feedback so the next time much love this is manny with tropical glitz